I study social organization and vocal communication in Asian elephants. What that means is I study who's friends with who and how they talk to each other. Now, when a lot of people think of elephants, they think of the big-eared kind with tusks that are found in Africa, which is the African savanna elephant. But actually, there's a separation of six million years between African elephants and Asian elephants, which is about the same time span that separates them from woolly mammoths. So I'm studying how the ecological circumstances under which Asian elephants evolved might explain things about the way their relationships are structured and how they communicate with one another. And I'm comparing that to what people have found out about African elephants and other animals that live in groups. So I work in a national park called Udawalawe in Sri Lanka. And we've individually identified just over 300 female elephants. On a typical day, we wake up at the crack of dawn and get into the park right when it opens. And we search around until we find a group of elephants and then we take their pictures, their uh, positions by handheld GPS. We write down all the names of the animals we recognize and then count all the ones we don't, including calves. Then we start recording the behavior of particular individuals, uh, which is the fun part. So if there's um, any vocal activity, we take audio and video recordings of that. Uh, and then we follow the same group of animals, sometimes for hours and hours. Our record actually is 12 hours with the same group. People ask me, like, isn't it dangerous? And actually, I say it's the very opposite because it's actually really peaceful. You just picture elephants in this big sea of grass, and they're moving really slowly. The wind is blowing. In the in the beginning, it felt really felt like each day had its own separate story. So quite often they do something and you don't understand why they did it because you know they're elephants and you're you're human and and there's a little barrier there. Um, but over time, you sort of start to understand what certain actions mean, what certain behaviors mean, what certain gestures mean, what certain sounds mean. And then it gets really exciting because it, you feel like you're understanding a part of that story. So we were really surprised initially when we went out several days in a row. We noticed that the same animals change their companions relatively often. So this means that even though you saw a, quote, group of elephants today, tomorrow some of those animals could be in, quote, different groups. So this type of social dynamic is called fission fusion. And the group really isn't a permanent body in this situation. So the immediate question for me was, well, how strong are these bonds among individuals? Are they just temporary or do they la last a really long time? Is there some sort of pattern that relates back to ecology? And given that there's a splitting and rejoining, how do they find each other? Do they actively coordinate or do they just sort of bump into each other randomly at some water hole? The first thing I did was look at their vocal communication, which is what got me interested in elephants in the first place. We've recorded over 3,000 individual calls. If you're close by, you can actually hear the higher frequency components. And in addition, there's a lot of other vocalizations that elephants use. And uh, we've described up to 14 for both males and females. So for females, this is 11 other types of vocalizations. And nearly all of them are used in contexts that involve movement. So this suggests that they really are doing something to coordinate with each other and they're not just randomly bumping into one another. But I've also found that um, groups are bigger and a lot more coordinated in dry seasons than in wet seasons. Um, so that's a hint that there might be something ecological responsible for that. And finally, it looks like despite the fact that individuals appear to change their companions on a short time scale, so if you look on the scale of days or weeks, if you look over really long time scales, like years, it's actually pretty stable. I plan to be continuing this research as long as I live, <laughs> if I'm lucky. The study of behavior is one of the most exciting things about biology. And just, it's, it's one of the things that gets every kid and grown up interested in the natural world. Just think about all those David Attenborough documentaries. Myself, I study a really endangered species, and there are people who live right alongside where I work. So in addition to the research questions related to behavior, I'm interested and really want to learn more about how we can reconcile the needs of people with the needs of wildlife, uh, because ultimately our fates are linked. <laughs>